Tell somebody comment there. Bring it, bring it to me now. Yeah, bring it, bring it. Bring it, I'm here already. Bring it, please. He doesn't listen, right? Right. You really like babe? Yes, babe. So. You can't be doing. <laughs> Are you going to start for this life? <laughs> babe, we'll start the two bar. <laughs> you shame my baby. Yeah. No, no, no. You can't wind up any life and right, talk so serious talk things here. Yeah. Serious things, yeah. Sorry. Forgive me. What trouble is this, boy? All I ignore this woman behind me there. Eh? The little young thing I have as wife. Playing the fool. Sure enough, she big belly self. Anyway, good evening, one and all. I'm going to go through a few passages of scripture as an opening salvo and we can have a little discussion on how the children of Israel were freed and given permission to rebuild the temple in Jerusalem. Right? Now remember, they were captured under Babylon. Babylon would have had them for a very long time, for a long period of time. And then, the Medes and the Persians take over. Right? And when the Medes and the Persians would took over, they end up in a position whereby they found favor with King Darius and so on. And they still wasn't really came out of it. They, they found favor with Cyrus and then Darius. And then it took about 20 odd years after for Artaxerxes to really give the command somewhere around um, 445 BC. That is when they would have given the command to more or less let the children of Israel go back and also rebuild the temple in Jerusalem. Right? So this study is, as I was saying last night, you know, it is a very, very, very important study in terms of knowing your dates and knowing the calculations of the dates and so on and how you derive back to 1844 and how you how you come up with those dates why those dates are so important in christianity why it is that the prophecy coincide with these dates you know and we won't go into it in a whole this evening because as i said it's a it's a very deep study and i am not qualified <laughs> but i will attempt to share information with you that will give you some idea of how to get it in your mind. Now, I've seen pastors break it down real simple and simplify it, but they are trained and they know how to do that. I ain't that, I ain't trained as no pastor like that. I'm just a lay person that is studying a, a topic and I will share it through the text. I will read the text and you'll see where, how the permission happened and when it happened and so on. Now, if you go back and you're reading Daniel, you will realize that in Daniel, you had Nebuchadnezzar, and then you had the first one will come after him, when he need buckle and all these things. Good afternoon, that great um, singer, Jamak, one of the most entertaining. You ever see um, Jamak worship babes? There's a guy called Jamak, a real good um, worship leader. Very good. I enjoyed them so much. The last time I actually enjoyed a live concert was in um, a Saturday evening, just like this, over in um, Konupia Church. Somewhere near right over the to. And I had a concert there, boy. Those are the top gospel artists were there. 
and those people were very good. Okay, thank you, Ms. Gomez. Thank you. Yeah, that that con that little concert at AY evening was really, really good and Jama Kandi. I think um, what group he sings with boy? Anyway, it was very good. I was blessed, you know. And then soon after that COVID came, so we had no more concerts and stuff like that. Right, so what we what I'm saying is if you remember in in Daniel in um the book of Daniel it would um show you that after when um when each book of Daniel showed you different circumstances. The first one was diet, the second one was um in chapter two was the 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 dream and the um the the the, the different partitions of the world's history and then chapter three was Nebuchadnezzar want to play man for God and he bring his own golden image and then by chapter four Nebuchadnezzar's son not Belty Chaz but some Belty something was he named too he ended up dying the same night because he drinking the vessels that was from Jerusalem and then Chapter 5, I believe, is where Daniel was thrown in the lion's den. Now, if you read that account carefully, you will realize that there was a king there, and I believe it was Cyrus. And Cyrus was sudden when he realized he got set up and had to throw Daniel in the lion's den, if you all remember the, st the story, right? If you go back and read the account. Now, Cyrus, even though he was the king of Persia, he realized that, hey, the pe these people, these Jewish people, their God is the one and true only living God because of the example Daniel set when he went in the lands then. So when time set a pass now, and we go to the book of Ezra now, you will realize that the issue of the commandment to restore and build Jerusalem began with a specific decree. All right, but the problem is that there are several different decrees in the Bible concerning the building of Jerusalem. Right now, if you're watching, if you do any investigation, we are just starting Ezra chapter 1. Right now, Ezra is a very short book in the Old Testament, but it is key in unlocking what we need to understand um, in solving this. This mathematical or this prophetic um, dilemma, and it is important to solve the dilemma because it will solve a lot of confusion. As well as a little, little, small, little book. Get right here after some right here. So it's as well. Where this book is. Well, let bear some patience with me. I watched it last night and I can't, I can't, I can't see it now. Yeah, so the book of Ezra now gives you key indications as to what happened and gave a proper account. Now, Ezra is after Chronicles. Right, now, let me tell you now. After Second Chronicles is Ezra. Good. Now, we're reaching Ezra now. And Ezra is really linked to Daniel 8 and 9. Right? And according to the, the stuff I'm following here, it says in Ezra chapter 1, verse 1 to 4, right? You will get the understanding. Now, in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord came to the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled. Let me read that again. That in song to correct. Now, in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled, the Lord 
stood up as stood up the spirit in Cyrus, king of Persia, that he might proclaim that he might make a proclamation sorry throughout all his kingdom and put into writing saying thus said Cyrus king of Persia that the Lord God of heaven had given me all the kingdoms of this earth and had charged me to build <coughs> him a house at Jerusalem which is in Judea who is there among you of all his people is God be with him and let him go up to Jerusalem which is in Judea and build a house of the Lord of the Lord God of Israel he is God which is in Jerusalem and whosoever remaineth in any place where he sojourn let the man of his place help him with silver and with gold and with goods and with beasts besides the free will offering of the house of the Lord that, of the house of God that is in Jerusalem. So that is what happened there. So basically, if you re, if you read this passage here, this gives the account of King Cyrus allowing the Jews to return home to build their temple. Right? And uh, if you were to go down now to chapter 4 in Ezra, you will see that because of a false allegation, the progress was stopped. Satan again. Right? But we need first to go through this text more and look at it microscopically, look at it closely, all right, break it down a little bit as the 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 um the other um the theologian will say exegesis do a exegesis I mean it all that but that is why it has been doing when you're breaking down a text right so that is why we had to go down now and read over this a little more carefully and see where the hand of God working right now we had to keep in mind this fella Cyrus is a pagan king. When I say you're hearing now, you're hearing better? Hold on. Let me know if you're hearing for me, please. Somebody said they're not hearing and I'm talking loud. Anyway, you're going back in the story again. You're going to text again, right? No. Now when the first year of King Cyrus, King of Persia, the word of the Lord, yeah, the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled. In other words, Jeremiah already made this, had already prophesied this would happen. Right? Jeremiah, Jeremiah had already made this, this, this thing prophesied already. Right? The Lord stirred up the spirit. So everything here is controlled by Almighty God. This whole scene is, is being controlled by Almighty God. Right? Stood up the spirit in King Cyrus, the king of Persia, that he might proclaim, that, by, that he make a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put it also in writing, saying, Thus said the king of, of Persia, that the Lord thy God of heaven had given me all the kingdom of the earth and had had given me charge of the bill the house of jerusalem which is in judea in other words god sanctioned that a new cyrus so some people have it to say how could god use a man who is a be print all kind of idol and all kind of because remember he's the king of persia some people that say persia is satan's self Right? The prince of Persia is referred to as the devil. So how could Almighty God use a person like Cyrus to do his work? God is a respecter of no persons. And God will use whosoever he wants to fulfill his will. You understand? That is how powerful God is. And that guy 
a matter of fact, when you read um, in Daniel, where when Daniel was cast into the lions, then that king was actually sad that Daniel had to go in the lions then because he knew and he knew of Daniel's excellent spirit and he knew that Daniel was a true man of God and was not on no games. And so the king was actually sad when Daniel had to be cast in the den of lions. And he, in, in, in that king Cyrus, he actually said, Your God will be able to save you. That is what he said. He said, your God will save you. Don't worry, Daniel. Your God will save you. And the king couldn't sleep all night. He couldn't see between sun and turning. And early in the morning, he ran and, and, and call out to Daniel. Daniel, you're still alive? And Daniel said, yes. The angel said, the Lord, close the lion's mouth. So I'm alive. You understand? So that is why God has planted a seed in his servants. And all, all these are object lessons for us to learn. Because when we, when we um, perform well at our jobs, and when we give a good example and a good showing of ourselves as Christians, and especially as Adventist young men and women, you don't know the power of what you're doing in packing on others that are watching you and are observing you. You understand? So as we read along now, we will know... There's some text I wanted to read, you know. We could read um, Daniel 9.25 so you can get a clearer picture of what it is going on here. Daniel 9.25. I long time in I used to afraid to read this Daniel 9 and Daniel 8, you know. Because there's so much to take in and to understand. Hey, what's your paper now? Hey, what's your paper now? 9.25 Alright. Now that look. I ain't feeling that warm. Yeah, pay it on now. I'm feeling that. I'm trying to feel sweaty already. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the mean unto the Messiah and Prince shall serve seven weeks and three score and two weeks the street shall be built again and the walls even the in trouble sometimes. Deep, deep, deep theology here, people. But I will try my best. Yeah, then. Skin nicotine, I'll be there for my lips. I'm going to sound like this book here. Yeah. So. No, I understand this. From the issue of the decree to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until the Messiah, that is Jesus. The prince shall be seven weeks and 62 weeks. So that is the timing in which... Actually, I'm looking at Oh, gosh. Can you see? It can kind of like a small shape. Yeah. That is where we have to understand that there is a timing in which... We had to go through with this thing. But I wanted us to see where Satan was busy and he also stopped the thing from happening in Ezra chapter 4. You know, this Bible has so much a drama. It is unbelievable. Right. Ezra 4, 6 to 13. Okay. 
Donc, on s'est en bisier. And in the reign of Asal Urus, in the beginning of his reign, wrote they unto him an accusation against the inhabitants of Judea and Jerusalem. And, on the and in the days of Artaxerxes, wrote Bel Shilam. Some kind of names coming up here. Oh my God. And the rest of their companions unto Artaxerxes, king of Persia. And the writing of the letter was written in the Syrian tongue and interpreted in the Syrian tongue. Rehum, the counselor, and shut himself. The scribe wrote a letter against Jerusalem to Artaxerxes, the king, in this sort. So you see, people now don't like to hear what they're talking about. They have to give offering, and, and people wherever there is have to contribute. And this other thing, you have to build this temple in Jerusalem. And these brothers now start to go against what King Cyrus had decreed. That where God allowed King Cyrus to get on a sign to watch the temple to be rebuilt. And the rest of the nation whom the great and noble Asnap, Asnapa brought over and set the city of Samaria and the rest at the side of the river and at, at such time. And this is the copy of the letter that was sent unto him, even unto Artaxerxes. By servant and a man, we up to which we right? Side of the river and such time. And this is be it known to the king that the Jews which came up from from thee to us are to come unto Jerusalem, building their rebellious and bad city, and have set up the walls thereof to join the foundations. Be it known now unto the king that if this city is city be built and the walls set up again, then they will not pay toll contribution and customs, and so thou shalt in danger the revenue of the king. So what end up going on is when you read verse 13, is really a sort of politics that are going, and men start to talk about money. Because be it known unto the king that if the city is, is if the city be built, the walls be set up again, there will not be any pay toll, tribute, and custom. And so thou shalt endanger the revenue of the king. So what I tell it at is if Jerusalem is rebuilt, we will lose revenue. No custom duty, no tribute. You understand? So that is what them miscreants went and do and stop and slow down the, po the process. Right? They stop and they slow down the process. Now when Darius came into the picture now, it went from Cyrus to Darius. Right? Cyrus now, Darius now, would have allowed the Jews to complete the rebuilding of the temple. Right? And that part of it is picked up in Ezra chapter 6, verses 8 to 12. Moreover, I make a degree what you shall do to the elders of these Jews of the building of the house of God. That the king's goods, even of the tribute beyond the river, forthwith expense given unto these men, and they do not expense unto me, and that they be not hindered, and that they and and that which ye have need of, both young 
bullocks and rams and lambs for the burnt offering for the God of heaven, wheat, salt, wine, oil, according to the appointment of the priests which are at Jerusalem, let it be given them day by day without fail. That they may offer sacrifice and sweet save unto God of heaven and, and pray for the life of the king and of his sons. Also, I have made a decree that whosoever shall alter this word, let timbrel, timber be placed down from his house and be set up. Let him be hanged therein and let his house be made a dunghill for this. Right? And the penultimate, the penultimate verse here now, and God, and the God had cursed his name that the well there destroy all the kings and people, and they shall put their hands to the altar to destroy the house of God, which is at Jerusalem. I, Darius, have made a decree, let it be done with speed. Now read over verse 12. And God, and the God that had caused his name to the well there, destroy all kings and people that shall put to their hands to alter or destroy this house. God, which is at Jerusalem, I, Darius, have made a decree, let it be done at speed. Now, on short, it is. Darius commanded and said, Watch me, let this thing be done with speed. Right? So, Darius gave a decree. Some smart men, some politicians came along in chapter 4 and said, Well, you, at as it says, you will make no money. Right? And then now we see here now in Ezra chapter 7. Right? Um, Artaxerxes gave authority to Ezra to lead the nation in the laws of God. And that is from Ezra chapter 7, verse 11 to 26. Now, we Bible studying today, boy. Now, Artaxerxes' letter. This whole, this whole section here is a letter from Artaxerxes. Right? Go and watch a eh? big, 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 big minister in my life today, boy. Pastor Edward Reed. <laughs> Good evening, Pleasant Sabbath to you. Oh, come on in here, boy. Vanessa, you here now? Let me know if you're here, please. Eh? Vanessa, all the type in the comment section. Let's see, let's see. Better read. I just read in a little piece of Ezra, boy. With some of the Belgian around the world. And let's do that little reading here this evening. Let's see, I'm going to find out if I hear any good here now. I'll go up on Facebook and see what's going on here. In this life here now. Right. 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 I, I hear I hear it myself on Facebook. So we got to go. Right. Right. I, I hear I I hear it myself. So I don't do my own song check already. Right, Vanessa? We start your phone and see if something wrong with your speaker or something because I watch it myself on Facebook and I hear it myself. Right? So we're going to read now at Azix's letter. And I was about to say Hollywood depicted this art as it sees um, in a movie 
Okay, nice. And again, we're live and direct now, um, Vanessa. Hollywood depicted this art as it sees in a movie called 300. Right? And what they don't know is they were actually showing people what, what Daniel chapter 2 already predicted. Alright? And if you were to understand the, the, the story of Daniel chapter 2, you will realize that after the Medes and Persians, the next group of people, right, that were to rule the, 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 the then known world, were the Greeks, right? Now, they are, the, they are depicted in, in Daniel as a leopard, as a, a fast-moving beast. And that is how they conquer that giant of an army with millions of soldiers um, is um, by moving very rapidly and they, they use a different style of warfare. As a matter of fact, they, they, they had um, a triangle system that nobody, they couldn't penetrate the defenses because it was armor. They had their shields up right around, plus the shields was able to cover when they throw stuff on top. So, and they were able to just go through and defeat that army away. And that is how the Medes and the Persians were defeated, right? In just in line and exactly on time and according to what God prophecy said, right? So sometimes Hollywood does pick and choose what they want to tell you of, of world history and world events. But sometimes they cannot, they cannot get away. So when people see Artaxerxes in a movie, and then read about Artaxerxes' letter in the Bible. It is very powerful because they, they could relate to it. And a lot of young people that would have looked at that movie for the action and the excitement. But when you go back and you think about it, it's really Daniel <laughs> is where you went and watch Daniel chapter 2. So let us get into the letter from Artaxerxes, which is very important in terms of, of, of that center week cycle that we need to study and get to understand properly so that we understand how our church came to be right now this is a copy of the letter that the king Artaxerxes gave unto Ezra the priest the the scribe even a scribe of the word of the commandment of the Lord and his statutes to Israel Artaxerxes king of king unto Ezra the priest a scribe of the law of God, of the God of heaven, perfect peace, and such, and at such a time, I make a decree that all of thy people of Israel and of his priests and Levites in my realm, which minded of their own free will to go to Jerusalem, go with thee. <coughs> no, remember you say of your own free will there were some of them that wanted to stay in Babylon there were some Jews love Babylon more than Jerusalem as for as much as thou art sent of the king and of his seven counselors to inquire concerning Judea and Jerusalem according to the law of thy God, which is in thy hand, and to carry the silver and the gold, which the king and his counselors have freely offered unto the God of Israel, whose inhabitants is in Jerusalem, and all of the silver and gold that thou hast, can thus find in all the province of Babylon, with the free will offering of the people and the priests offering willingly for the house of their God which is in Jerusalem right that thou may buy speedily with this money bullocks, rams, lambs and their meat offerings and their drink offerings and offer them upon the altar of the house of your God which is in Jerusalem. And whosoever shall seem good to thee and to thy brethren to do with the rest of the silver and gold that do after the will of your God. 
the vessel also that shall given thee for the service of the house of God, whose delivered thou before the God of Jerusalem, and whosoever shall shall be needful of the of the house of thy God, which thou shall have occasion to bestow, bestow it out of the king's treasure house. <laughs> you hear that kind of blessing of God people again? From a pagan people? Only understanding the level of incredibleness we're going on here now? <laughs> and I, even at Xerxes, the king, do make a decree to all treasures which are beyond the river, that whosoever Ezra, the priest, the scribe of the law of the God of heaven, shall require you, it be done speedily unto an hundred talents of silver, and unto a hundred measures of wheat, and unto the hundred baths of wine, and unto a hundred baths of oil, and sold without prescribing how much. Whatsoever is commanded by the God of heaven, let it diligently be diligently done for the house of God of heaven of the house of God for heaven for dying for why should there be wrought against the realm of the king and his sons? Hello. Nice pretty boy. I look my big son come on the live there to join us. Onala, how are you going, my cousin? You see my son Onala? Watch my son. No, don't touch him. Don't touch him. He's my big son here. You see him? So how nice he is, Onala? He's a cutie. Say hello. Say hello. Say hello. Right, see how this is now. Where are you, boy? Alright, sorry, finish tracking. Also, we certify you that. Touching of any priest or Levite, singer, potter, or minister of the house of God, it shall not be lawful to impose toll, tribute, custom upon them. And thou, Ezra, after the wisdom of thy God that is in thy hand, set magistrates and judges which shall judge all the people and be beyond the river. Also, Sorry, all such as known the laws of thy God, and teach ye them that ye know them not. And whosoever will not do the law of thy God and the law of the king, let judgment be executed speedily on him, whether it be unto death or banishment or confiscation of goods or imprisonment. That is the letter. Now, you have to take this thing into context, eh? That is a letter of King Artaxerxes. He wrote a letter to Ezra the scribe of the law of God, giving full permission not only to leave any bill, but also to take money, and not no joke money, plenty money, and animal and drink and all these different things. Wine and wheat and everything that they need to do the sacrifices with. To take these things from his realm and take it to Jerusalem. Now that is, if you will understand the power of God through that letter in our day, right? In Ezra chapter 7 from 11 to 26, you, you, you don't know faith. That is extreme power. That is God moving in a big way. Because if you understand how them fellas used to move, 
is the most that are sinful people in the world. And why I say that is because God take a people, a grouping of people, millions of people, them, them fellas are the biggest army in the world. There's millions of people marching. When they're marching, they just are thunder, the ground used to shake. Because elephant is, is all kind of beasts they're moving with. To march to go and fight other nations. You understand? And that's how they... O-N... Alright, Gonzalez 1, 2, 3. Right? But drop the G. Yeah. So that, that is a show you the... Actually, is 3 to 1. Where are pen from? Drop the G. O N Z A L E S. 3 to 1. But capital O. Right? Yeah. So just imagine a pagan nation that never knew about God's about Almighty God and about God's way of life and through one or two of his servants would get to know who God is and then take up their own treasure and give it willingly to that God because God would have to be fulfilled because other prophets would have prophesied these things to happen and had to happen and so when you read these accounts in the Bible, I think it is very, very, it's almost overwhelming to me to see what happened here in Ezra chapter 7 and verse 20, um, 11 to 26. <clears throat> right? We have now to go over to Nehemiah now, where permission was also given by, um, hey, my boss doesn't reach anything, but hey, Shila Lenman. <coughs> How are you going, Gil? I hope you're feeling good. I know I locked down. My wife had a little COVID day. So they say, but me think she had no COVID now that that test wrong in Jesus' name. Babes, you ready for the COVID? I will mean, we'll drive that out of Shiba. <laughs> I take that COVID out that's a long time. <laughs> right? We have to go over by Nehemiah now, chapter 1. Follow the Nehemiah is. For the final part of this this story here. Only a long time in reading Nehemiah. Right? Violin, this is what I do with my little friends and thing on Facebook as we do our church and thing now, boy. We just do a little thing online. But you know, we missing each other. And a lot of people just sit down. We just talk about a little few little Bible scripture. A little lesson study. Hey. Now, Nehemiah is right after Ezra. Right. Hey, good evening, boy. Short boss, boy. How you going? Bam, bam, bam. Nehemiah chapter one. It looks like it's the whole of the chapter one. He has this to read here, boy. Yeah, it's supposed to be upstairs. I know it's why it is other than that. Sorry for the interruption. Last time I was doing that. I do the important stuff over there. Why am I not saying Nehemiah 1? I might be I might make a mistake, you know. Permission was given by Artaxerxes to rebuild the temple in Jerusalem. And 
that would have been in 457 BC, according to my notes I have here. Right? And a lot of time passed, even though those letters was given, it didn't happen immediately. A lot of time passed, and different things happened. And then it happened about 20 years after. Look, I tell you, this book is plenty drama, plenty drama, plenty drama, plenty drama. A lot of back and forth and up and down and left and right. I just got into chapter one here to see if it lines back up with what we're studying. And it is not. According to what I'm reading here. So, so not to confuse the virgin, we will stop at Ezra chapter 7. Verse 11 and 26. That is Atazilx's letter. Alright? And you can go further along this notes I have here. Right. As I was saying, by come back in my chapter 1 again. That is 20 years after. Now, when the, the letter went out in, 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 in Ezra chapter 7, verse 26, that was in the seventh year of Artaxerxes. Now, in the 20th year, right? Of Artaxerxes, it have Nehemiah chapter 1. And from what I was reading in Nehemiah chapter 1, People was crying and wailing and like, why am I in and why in letting me come out of here? Yes, yeah, son. But as I say, I don't want to confuse the virgin. But the point I want to make is, even though we're looking at these texts, you can see the power of Almighty God using a totally corrupted king. To bring justice to his people, <clears throat> and in so much so that they had to give massive amount of offerings. Everything that they would have needed to build that temple from leaving the the the, the Medes and the Persians was afforded them through the power of Almighty God, and that is the lesson we had to take away from it. Because whatever situation you, end up, you may have end up in. God has always make a way out or make a way of escape, especially through the way you live your life and through the testimony of your life. You understand? <clears throat> so basically, we have a better understanding now of how the children of Israel were we able to secure their freedom when they were captured in Babylon. Right? We know. Oh my God. My son, I shot my, my thing, yes? Yeah. We now have a better understanding of how God uses his servants to even change the minds and hearts of kings. We saw it in 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 Daniel chapter 1, he uses servants in the, in, 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 in the way that they ate and they did not eat that portion of the king's meat. And it was shown that they looked better. That is why we, as some Adventist Christians, would always eat better and always try to have a balanced diet and so on. That's what has always been telling one. Right? My boss. In Daniel chapter 2, he, the king again had a dream. He couldn't remember the dream. God used Daniel and his friends to pray and they revealed what happened in secret. And again, the king was convinced 
Although in chapter 3, he play fast and he wanted Billy Golan statue. He didn't want his time to end. When God said at the end, right? In chapter 4, Daniel again had was to um, read the writing on the wall where it was found he, the, the, the young man that came after King Nebuchadnezzar was found wanting and all he, he continent shake and he, he set the buckle and because he was making a mockery of God by drinking in the vessels of Almighty God that they brought from them when they captured the children of Israel and he was doing all kind of harder with all those vessels and God dealt with him in that he allowed Cyrus and they to drain the river around Babylon and walk up and when all of them partying and fetting all of them zessing Cyrus came in on him and dealt with him that very same night from there now Cyrus and Daniel intermingle again a servant of the Lord again by throwing a good example again um, by showing another example again I will add Mr. Reed man I'm adding a, a gentleman here if he wants to come on the live, he can come on the live. Mr. Reed is a very, very well experienced. He's actually a pastor with a wealth of experience. Reed is. I don't know how to do this thing. You know. I just see a pop up here. So, to add. And I add in here. Add. Reed is a man. He does plant. He's a church planter. He does go and plant church about the place. Read come now. Read by you know what we're doing. I'm trying to add in this thing here because your contribution will be stellar. But this discussion this afternoon because there are some points that I may not actually be sharp on where you will be much sharper than I and I'm trying to add you allow viewers to send you a request to join yeah that is on you can add them at any point really let us accept the invitation eh, bro You listen, but come on the live now, man. <laughs> Read your only thing better than me. I know learning this thing. Anyhow, guide me if I'm going wrong, eh? Pastor Reed. Yeah, so we would have seen all these different guys as children of as servants of God. Under the authority of these different kings, would have made a huge impact. Because when the three big boys was burnt, thrown, attempted to be burnt, and the king said, "Well, it's our fourth person." These guys when they came out, the king makes certain laws. Watch me. You see them fellas and the religion. Don't go wrong the religion because I'll chop up all of them and kill all of them. You understand? I'll be calling out a dumb heap. Right? When Darius was troubled out of his mind for Daniel, because he knew Daniel was a good person, the king turned around and tell when he made them smart, when them set up Daniel and make the law, the, the Persian king pass a law. In Persian society, it's like this. Once you pass a law, you can't change it. You understand? So them smart and them set up Daniel knowing he does face Jerusalem every day to pray. Because Daniel didn't to go back to Jerusalem. So they come up with a law now stating that nobody mustn't pray to no other God but the king. But we're getting the king now. The king said, yeah, man, that's a law. We're going to that. And then them fellas turn around and say, look, watch, 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 Daniel. Look what you're doing there. And then say, well, king, you didn't say, oh, nobody not supposed to do so and so and so and so. Set up the man. No? The man that threw Daniel in land then and crying, throwing land in land then. The king, eh? And yet again, that king had to turn around and say, Daniel, don't worry, boy, your God will save you. 
And boom shot, the Daniel, Daniel was saved. And then, then through that experience again, that king realized that the God that Daniel and them is serving is the real God. And all them smart and them get bite up. And then they kill off the whole bloodline. When we eat it right there. And then, them days, again, 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 them fellas, you know, human rights watch. <laughs> I know, spying and all kind of pardon and it and that. You offend the king, there's you, your mother, your father, your daughter, your son, your cousin, your bloodline. They say eliminate your bloodline. You must have nobody on your bloodline again. Yes, and so throughout the book of Daniel, in the early books, three, one, two, three, even four, you're seeing where people that serve God was able to change the, the heart and mind of a pagan king and that would have changed the entire society because the king would have made certain decrees that watch me or let follow this word now because there's the real God here. Right? So what the Jewish people would have failed to do as a collective, it was done through one or two of the servants of Almighty God and God's way was, was still came to the forefront. And that is what we have read there now where a man like Artaxerxes a pagan man and a man like Cyrus and a man like Darius was able to see that Almighty God is the true God. And that is it. That even though we're trying to unlock the, the sequence of events that lead us up to 1844, the Great Awakening, we could also take a lot of object lessons from the servants throughout this passage of time where these guys would have done very well in the sight of God, even in so much so that they convince pagan kings to follow Almighty God. That is the ultimate. In my eyes, you know, that is the ultimate. You understand? Alright, but notes here saying the first two dates are way too early to have any bearing upon the coming of the Messiah. And on the last one, it was too late. Ezra was given his commandment, his commission, sorry, in the seventh year of Artaxerxes. So allowing for his ascension year, the Persian king began his reign in 464 BC. This places the king's decree to Ezra around 5 457 BC. Alright? When we find also Ezra 9.9 It's going to be the last blank of a minute, you know? For we have slaves, yet in our bondage of our God has not forsaken us, but has extended love, loving kindness to us in all the sight of the king of Persia, the kings of Persia, to give us everything to raise up the house of God. Of, of rise up the house of our God to restore its ruins and give us a wall in Judea. <coughs> right, so you see here this study. I don't think I really yet to explain this to people. Because it is very deep. I tell you, it's not an easy study. I just keep breaks and breaks and breaks and breaks in it. You understand? But what we have to take away from it, as I said earlier, <coughs> is the fact that men that were put there was able to convince 
these kings to do good in the sight of Almighty God. Now, I want to show a chart of I want to show a quick chart of the entire sequence I want to show a quick chart of the sequence of the 23 year prophecy now I'll flip around the camera right? and you will see You will see what it is, what we try to decipher and to get it down pack, right? God. Right. Now you see this here is the total. Right, thank you, Vanessa. This is the total 23 year prophecy, right? This is the total time here. 490 years is the 70 weeks that the children of Israel was given. And that point there alone is a whole discussion by itself. Right? Now this is when the decree was given. I saw we just yeah, we just read it. 457 BC, the decree to rebuild Jerusalem. Right? And then now we have 69 weeks, which is really 483 years. Now from here, the 69 weeks is when Christ come on the scene, when Jesus was baptized, that is when he started his ministry, for three and a half years, right? Then he was cut off, that is when he was crucified, right? And then you have another three and a half years again, Right? And then now, on 1810 years, and I wish the investigated judgment period of 1844. Now, there's a chart that we're trying to understand. As I say, it's a bit complicated, right? But what you have to keep in mind is that the Jews were given a specific time to fulfill their requirements to God. Right? And when the Jews failed to fulfill their requirements, the message went on to the Gentiles. That is all you have to keep in mind. To simplify it. Right? All that pretty comments actually if I'm wrong. But I read. Tell me if I'm going right. Right? What they needed to do the Jews were supposed to carry the gospel onto the world during all that time in the for 490 years, 70 weeks. But the Jewish nation always waiting on the Messiah. And when the Messiah did come, they rejected him. Because during that time, by the time he reached to the, Jew, the Jewish nation and the Jewish temple and the scribes and the Pharisees and all these people, and the Sadducees and all these people that were so fixed in Jewish tradition, at that time, the period of time under the in the in the, in the metals in the metal statue would have been in the era of the of iron. Iron is the Romans, so the Romans would have occupied Jerusalem at that time. They would have been under the Jewish occupation, right? Good evening, Candice. Hey, they would have been under Jewish occupation. And while they were under Jewish occupation, they knew the prophecies, you know, because these people were scribes and Pharisees and Sadducees. These people were devout people of, of the Bible, of the Torah. The Torah is the Old Testament. During that time, what they had was the Torah. Right? They knew that in and out, they knew all the customs, um, all the Sabbaths, all the all the different um good day good day uh, yes during the time of the decree the nation was in bondage but what i'm talking about now is that their 70 weeks even though 
the, the, the 419 during that time they came out and they were given because the decree started in 457 BC and they they had time to come out and to witness to all the world but the Jewish nation tell me now if I went wrong tell me right the Jewish nation failed to do what God wanted them to do as God's chosen people right and when by the time Christ actually came Christ came when the Roman Empire ruled the world and what the Jewish nation wanted at that time was a Messiah to come to overthrow the, the Romans and to set up the Jews as God's people and for the Jews to rule over everybody like kings. And I don't think that was part of God, God, God um, that wasn't part of God's salvation plan. What they wanted, what God wanted the Jewish nation to do was let people know the truth about the Bible, about the commandments and so on. And they failed to do that. They kept all the information to themselves, hoping the Messiah will come and destroy the um destroy the um the Romans. And that was not supposed to happen because if you watch the statue with the metals in Daniel chapter 2, the head of gold, the breast and hands of silver, the belly and tire of brass, the leg of iron, and the feet of Mary clay. And those things represent the head of gold is Babylon, silver is Mese and Persia, and the brass is the, the, the Greeks and they, after the Greeks, the Roman came and the Roman was very terrible. Right? And they ruled for the longest period of time. Right? And now we are now living in the feet of I, um, iron and clay. And it, within that chapter 2, it will also signal to you that a stone cut out without hands uh, out of a mountain will cut out without, without hands and come and crush the image, smooth the image on his feet and the entire image was turned to powder, right? And it was blown away like like shaft of the wind. Eh? I'll come in and check you sometime this week, eh? Miss Wallace. If not tomorrow. <laughs> if not tomorrow. <laughs> Trust me, I'll come in and check you. She know what I talk about. Miss Wallace, I come in and check you, right? Right. Just make sure you 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 in work, eh? Right. Yeah. So the stone, eh, all my family come in and the life, boy. You see, poor you're going you. You still in my bed, yes? Yeah, the, the stone cut out without hands, smote the image on its feet, and the whole image turned to powder and blew away. And what that represents is when Christ come, Christ is he want to come and destroy all world system, all government system, and destroy all that and set up God system. Right? So that the Jewish people never read that in, in, in Daniel chapter 2. So they wanted a Messiah to come and 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 do away with the Romans, get the Romans off the back, and they set up and set a move and they be God's people. No. That is not the way it was supposed to go. In so much so that there was a guy called Saul, a very bright, bright fellow in the Jewish system, extremely bright. And Saul, he volunteered to kill people who was following Christ. That is tell you how the Jews hated Christ. In so much so that Saul, in AD 34, witnessed the stoning of Stephen. And when Stephen was stoned, he looked up, he was most peaceful, and said, he see heaven open, and he's seeing Christ standing on the right hand of God. And that enraged them. And that enraged them. By the, by when, when Stephen preached them thing, and they hear them think about that Stephen mouth, one of Christ's followers, right? Man, the massacre Stephen had a big stone down in a, in a, in a thing, down, down in a little river, bed, bed day down in, in Jerusalem. Day. The massacre he had, boss up all he had, they mash him up. And that happened in 834. Three and a half years after Christ was crucified. Yes, and when Stephen started to get big stone, so he see the vision of Christ and the right hand of God. And Paul was, Saul was there. 
and Saul take up fire rage to go and kill Christians, all of them who was following <coughs> after Jesus Christ. Right? And he wrote to Damascus, Saul was turning to Paul. That is just an example to show you how much the Jews hated Christ and that they really wanted some Messiah to come and burst the clouds and destroy the Romans. The Jewish nation is ceased to exist, in my opinion, from AD 34. When AD 34 reached and they stoned Stephen, that was the last straw, in my opinion, where them and God is concerned. And they was then now was a hey, God said now boy, all they can make no more, all the time, all the seven two weeks done, right? All the time up. All they, all they fail to do what all they're supposed to do. Now the message has to go to the Gentiles, which is all of us throughout the world. But there are some Jews. <clears throat> and enjoy your Barbados deal. I hope you don't get too much ash. <coughs> there are some of us, some Jews that did did actually accept Christ on the cross. Right? Some of them went in secret and asked what they have to do to be saved. And I was wondering if they had to, like a demon, to know if he had to go back in the mother womb and be reborn. So they didn't really understand the, the concept of being baptized. Trevor, what are we going to? Right? Yes, and so some of them didn't understand the concept of being reborn, reborn and living, dying to self and Christ living in them. And that is what baptism is. When you get baptized, <coughs> Is a public profession of your faith and, and your trust in God, right? That's right. That's right. And that is why <coughs> some people does cling on to the doctorate and a master's degree. And, and not be totally dependent on Christ. That's right, Vanessa. Most of them ended up in, in most of us sometimes, and that is where in, 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 in Revelation, I think it's either chapter 2 or chapter 3, where he describe the different churches, some of us end up finding ourselves in a Laodicean state. The Laodicean state, there was a place in, the, in biblical time called Laodicea, right? Where it had a... A um uh what do you call this thing boy? There was a a hot spring, but by the time the water reached that village, that area they call Laodicea, used to be lukewarm. It wasn't good for nothing, right? And people had this, the water wasn't good for nothing. So that is why some people that end up now, you're not on fire for God and you're not cold. So that is why God has said, God has spit you out him out because you don't know what to do with you. He don't have to warm you up or to cool you down. You too hot already. You too cold. I mean, you're lukewarm. God has spit you out him out. He vomit you out. You understand? So it's either you're, either you're all. You understand? It's not, it's not, no, no middle ground, no gray area. You understand? So some, some of us... As Adventists, sometimes we just get full of ourselves, and uh, sometimes we just take our knowledge. One brother could call openly. I ain't afraid to call his name. Oh, he's a lawyer now. Now Mackenzie man. I was a product of Mackenzie. We know Mackenzie. When I was down and out, I, that is when I started going my and that is when I get in contact with brother Mackenzie. And I could tell you the man could preach. But Mackenzie now end up taking the preaching thing and it went to his head. And Mackenzie's a man like to study, like to have knowledge. The first person I hear who use the word chronology and, and, and um, diaspora and all these big words is Mackenzie. You understand? The first time I hear the word tower fear, <laughs> that's why he does pass away, that's walk, right? It's Mackenzie. And people used to be amazed because he used to come at a level where very intellectual. And Mackenzie now, just like Satan in heaven, started to get ideas in his mind. 
And Mackenzie's a man now, so to do so, eh? All these people and them rating me up, boy. Mackenzie is a musician, you know? Mackenzie used to play with a band. What's the name of that band, boy? Mackenzie was a guitarist with a soccer band, a popular soccer band in town. He that taxi or one of them. Yes, yeah, son? He that taxi or, 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 or Blue Ventures or some one of them band. Mackenzie used to play with in Carnival. So what Mackenzie did, you understand? When he came and he became a pastor, he came in the church. I can never forget this. At AY, he said, well, they, well, they want to see something. And all the time people praise and watch them. Now, them days at Marathon is opposite spectacular forum. If all you know, people who know about Marathon in them days, was almost a thousand people in that church. That is when Fitz and the don't finish and, and the church was on fire. You understand? So Mackenzie's this hot shot pastor and the big Mackenzie there to, to minister unto us. And Mackenzie come up because in those days it used to have food for everybody in church. Right? And church used to run from 9 in the morning till about 10 o'clock in the night. I'm telling you. Because when when Church finish, church finish about one, two, half past two. And from two, half past two, it got a praise and worship session going on there. Straight on to AY. And people didn't want to go home because Pastor Mackenzie used to be so sweet. Yes, yeah, son? And Mackenzie come out there with the guitar. And he just changed some chords. And that whole place gone pandemonium. And that guitar. Yes, yeah, son? It's only years after that I look back at these events. I realize that this fellow was serious. He was dangerous. Yes, and so people like Mackenzie and them now, Mackenzie end up in a situation whereby he wanted to open his own church. And Mackenzie end up putting things in place to leave. <laughs> Mackenzie end up putting things in place to leave the Maranatha um, flock and started his own church. Right? And a lot of people was carried away. A matter of fact, in those days, the choir was 40 members plus. It belonged to nine members. I'm telling you, I was actually heartbroken because all my friends and things gone. You understand? So this is just an example of what would have been going on with the Jews because they have so much knowledge and understanding in their mind. They feel them closer to God than everybody else. You understand? So these are the things men us get dangerous. I got a lot of other people that were wrong in those days, right? That break away and form their own church because they're starting to get smart. You understand? That shepherd rod. These fellas could quote all different things without watching the Bible and people get tapped at and run behind them. You understand? That's why I never run behind no man because when people are telling me, come and go so with he, I say, no, 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 no. I came here sick to death from in the hospital and i came here to follow jesus i didn't come in my to for no no minister or no preacher no matter how good the preaching was and how good you felt That's right. We have to become overcomers. That is what Israel means. We have to become overcomers. In other words, if we don't overcome, we can't be called Israel. Very good contribution, Pastor. Yes, and we must become overcomers, and that is how we take up the, the how we become Israelites. Yes, son? That is how we become Israelites. But to understand the prophecy, we will study and study until we understand the prophecy. And for the younger ones who are on this live, it is very important that we understand these prophecy for us to understand how important our religion is. Now, people that say our religions are called and we follow and right, old talk. Yes, son? 
because you have proof here showing you how the Great Awakening came about in 1844. And when the time started to count, and because there is a prophecy in the Bible, let's call it 2300 day year prophecy. You understand? It's a day for a year, a year is like a, a thousand years, like a day for the Lord. You understand? So these things were worked out by men who studied and studied and studied and realized they watch. There are dates and times here that we have to apply to modern life to know well why XYZ happened. And if you all know the history of the Adventist Church, there was a great disappointment in 1844. And because of the great disappointment, people went back and studied the word a whole two years. Men stop then doing nothing but eating Bible and they ended up realizing what is what and how it had to go. And they started to preach that word all over the place. America developing and all these different things, no persecution, no Catholic church coming to cut off people's neck for our burn them to nobody to the stake in America. Right? That is Revelation 12, 17 in, in play there. Right? And 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 that is how everything developed. You understand? By the way, by the way, as we're speaking about these dates, you must also know about the name of someone called Francesco Ribera. Because some people have it to say, this timing where people, these seven, were between the prophecy and so on, some people have it to say that that is when the rapture is going to happen. Why did Francesco Ribera came up with that crazy theology? That's why no compromise for us. Why Francesco Ribera came up with that stupid crazy theology was to defend the Catholic, the papacy. Right? Because when... They come up with their altered version of this timeline. They said that the um that is because of um to show that is a futurist concept. That is in the future, and they have to be raptured away, and that is where this whole secret rapture nonsense come about. To put out of the minds of people that the Catholic Church is in trouble, in fact, the what is described in Revelation chapter 13. Right? As a dragon. Right? So that is what is going on there. We have had a good evening. So it's a little after five. We have been here, and I'm thankful for all those who join us. And um, Pastor Reed as well, I think, Sabbath evening, Saturday night from 8 o'clock for about an hour, hour and a half, and then Saturday evening, so about 5 o'clock till the sunset. And that is what we does be doing every week. Yes, and so, that's edifying each other, and you know, we're not meeting in church as regularly as before and have been promising to run through this study and it have it have enlightened me just as much as it enlightened you because a lot of the stuff I've read here and gone through with, with the people on the live this evening is things that I never read before. You understand? So it is very um it's very fulfilling to me also, you know, because as I said we're picking up a lot of object lessons and we understanding why certain things are the way they are. Right? And for us to really, as Adventist youths, um, to really understand the importance of our church and of our mission is to understand these prophecies. You understand? So that is why it will give others. Thank you, my brother. Yeah, th these prophecies will um, guide others and give them the strength to know that what it is. Wow, it's so late up there. What time it is, babes? Hmm? What time it is now? Seven o'clock? Yeah, so seven. <laughs> when I saw what time it is in England? 
Now nah, cry son, I key one tea. Yeah, looking for young thing. Yeah. It will be 10 o'clock up there right now. Wow. Time does fly, yeah? All right, Venice, have a good night. Let's see what time is it. 11 o'clock up in the up. 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 So let's throw it out to the group and we will look at it. I will try and read up on it. And of course, if I'm 12 o'clock already, wow. Okay, well, I'm going to have a good night. I'll see you in the week. Take a time, it's coming. Yeah, we are going bad feet. Yeah, man. So, all yeah. The child dying, it's a baby. Chill now, chill now. Oh, yeah, it's on 7 o'clock in China already. And um, we, have, we have been here for the last. <laughs> You're an idol, so girl. This one comment a model. And see your biblical talk talking here. Come on, sit down now, sit down now. Come on, sit down, come. This is the one on the app. Sit down, sit down. Anyway, you're just talking, no wife. Hey, sit down now. Believe that you sit down when you go your way, you know, because you're getting trouble. Yeah, okay. So I want to watch you again, playing the fool here. <laughs> come now, come now. Oh, this is my wife, Dominique, from like Vanessa. They're my ex girlfriend here, Vanessa. Everybody is your ex girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm see my cousin, my cousin, my cousin here, Chrissy Poo. My oh, cousin nice. girl, I like she done any life too. Okay. I'm drinking it too. Daniel chapter 4, I was thinking about that to them. We will see what's going on. If there's anything we will do, Daniel chapter 4. Daniel chapter 4, I think I read it this morning. Yeah, I think that's what I was reading this morning. Don't read it. Alright, boss. Listen. Yeah, we could do Daniel chapter 4 Friday night. And Daniel is a. It's a supposing and thing up and giving me a cup yourself, Nagel. Alright, alright, I'm done. What the hell is this, boy? You people talking serious Bible thing and you posing up. <laughs> <laughs> Are you good, yes? <laughs> you feel that modeling, sure? Daniel chapter 4. I think that is why I was reading this morning. I think I read four and five this morning. Yeah, you get you get next dream, but what one with this next dream now? Yeah, you got an exhibition. And then again, I didn't interpret it for him. Right, what, what he get here, well, I don't know what going on chapter 4 already. Right, because I was reading that this morning. Right, so. Thank you, my friend, Vanessa. Okay, have a good night, Vanessa. Yeah, we could do um chapter four because we did it this morning. And that is just showing you the um the different go ahead up using some different symbols to describe the iron, the, the, the iron, the brass, the silver and the gold. Right? So he does give him some creatures that will describe those things. And it will give the um those creatures will describe will give him the characteristics of those nations. Yes, and so that is about it there, right? So Saturday evening was nice, Friday night was nice, right? Um, welcome everybody who is there, whoever outside here want to um look at it. It's very um nice for you guys to join us and do a little Bible study, you know. Um, I always go live when I'm in church, but now it's no more church right now, so I had to go live 
in my house. Okay. They were catch on by a rich lit. <laughs> Derek, you know, look at the wrap up things here. Now you guys do a little quick little Bible study this evening here, Derek. I'm a, hey, Derek, watch me. I didn't think you see my little youth man yet. That is Liam. Liam, say hello. Yes. Say hello. That, 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 yes. right, that is Liam or Liam. Hey, Derek. My hey. partner from in Guardian Media. All right. It says after seven. Hey, right, I'm going to watch the news all here. Have a good evening. Right. Correct is right. Right, we will see about it Friday coming again, right? I want the people.